Now, if you're about to become a new puppy owner, you probably want to know everything you can about the breed. So in this week, we're gonna talk about your golden retriever puppy's first week home. And I am joined by professional dog trainer and multiple golden retriever owner, Instructor Wendy. I'm Ken Steep, and welcome back to McCann Dogs. In this facility, we help more than 500 dog owners every single week to overcome their dog training challenges. So if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that I can help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. So everybody, this is Gypsy and Wendy, what were some of the first things that you thought you'd need? Like what did you buy to prepare for bringing your adorable golden retriever puppy home? Well, one of the first things I did was I borrowed a smaller crate from a friend of mine for her yep. and then I got baby gates to put up around my kitchen it's a great to keep idea. her locked in. <laughs> sure that's a great idea. What about um, like treats or uh, other like accessories for your puppy? Was you, Maybe you had a house line for her was that something that you... I did have a house line and I had a smaller line. I did buy a new collar though and a new leash for her because oh, of course she has to have her own. Absolutely. Um, and you're, that's just a flat buckle collar? That's a flat buckle collar yeah. that she's gone on yes. Okay. So what did you do for food? Like how did you know what you were going to feed uh, your puppy when you brought her home? Home. Um, I spoke to the breeder about that. He recommended the food and also how much because I wasn't sure how much to feed her sure. each meal. Yeah. What about her first night home? What were what were the first things like in terms of uh, you know were you up all night? You know what do what do uh, your golden retriever prospective puppy owners need to know about that first night home with their with their new puppy? Well, I was very lucky with my breeder. They did a lot of training first. So her first night home, she'd been in and out of her crate a lot, so I, she could get used to it. I had her in for a short period of time and brought her out and rewarded her when she was in. And her first night, she was actually very good. She slept until two in the morning. Wow, okay. Got her up, took her out, didn't really talk to her, fuss with her, let her have a pee, then back in her crate, and then she slept until seven. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and is that uh, uh, the typical thing that a golden, I know you've, it, your goldens in the past, was it a similar experience yes. to them? Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're pretty comfortable uh, as long as you, your breeders had a little bit of experience with, with some of that crate training. Now crate training, we suggest for any new puppy owner. And what was, what was that process for you as you brought her home and got her used to her crate? Uh, that was the one thing I did want to do right away. I kind of had her in her crate. Um, I fed her in her crate and it was just short periods of time like she would go in for maybe 10 minutes and then I'd let her out Great. and then I'd have her out for a bit and then I'd put her back in her crate again so that she was very comfortable in the crate. Yeah so it's small periods short periods of time getting her really accustomed. The other thing we know is really valuable about the crate is that anytime that she comes out she's with you like you're yes. immediately building a little bit of leadership and a lot of value for spending time with you and uh, certainly a golden uh, puppy any puppy can get themselves into trouble so Supervision is so important. What do you do for supervision with her when um, she comes out of her crate? Like, how? Explain that process to me. What what kinds of things are you doing? With oh, 100% her? supervision. I, it's when she comes out of her crate, her collar and her leash go on right away, and she's kind of with me right there, so I can step on her leash if she's going to get into something. And the same as when I'm outside, I take her outside and I go outside with her. Yeah and make sure that she's okay and not getting into trouble. And yeah. has her leash on outside too, her long line. Yeah, yeah, so that's part of the puppy potty training process, which is hugely important. Has, you know, she, has she had accidents in, in your house? Oh yeah, we've had accidents. If I haven't 100% watched her, I turn my back to do something and all of a sudden, so then I quickly get her outside. For her potty training process, um, describe that to me, like break it down. How often were you taking her out? You know, how often um, did you just randomly need to take her out? Just sort of describe that to me. I was a bit nervous with her, making sure that she went out. So I mean, overdid it. I was almost every half hour. Okay. I would take her outside, make sure she do something. If she was in the crate, as soon as I let her out of the crate, outside we'd go. If I'd been doing some playing with her, I'd, as soon as I finished playing, outside we'd go again. And I'd never reward her though for going to the bathroom outside. I'd praise her, good girl, but I wouldn't give her any treats for that. I think that's something that's really important to remember because we've heard stories of people who, uh, when they take their puppy outside to go potty, they'll give them a treat. And very quickly their puppy learns that they, is the act of going outside and maybe even if they're they're squatting they have, they're not necessarily yeah. going but pretending to go that's going to get them a treat so using praise when you are outside and your puppy goes potty is more than enough because oh, yeah. it's it's a naturally rewarding behavior mm -hmm. so if she does have an accident in your home what's what are those moments you know she's you catch her because you're supervising her so closely which is so important she has an accident what's your next step if she has an accident and i catch her I will scold her and right away take her outside. Yeah. 
um, there were a couple of accidents that I had. did have my back turned and I missed her, so I couldn't scold her because I didn't catch her in the act. Yeah, marking that moment is so important with your ah, ah or your oops or something uh, is so valuable because you can, you really capture that moment yeah. and, and you really mark it for your puppy. Um, but as instructor Wendy mentioned, I mean, even the professionals, <laughs> the puppies can get away or you turn, turn your back for a moment and, and it will, accidents will happen oh, yes. in your home. So, um, you know, this is a regular part of the puppy potty training process. For your training throughout your uh, for, throughout the first week that you had Gypsy home, tell me a little bit of the exercises that you did, some of your general puppy training, and then a couple maybe uh, specific to Golden Retriever training that you did with her. What were you What were you working on with her? So the first one I was working on was her your basics, your sit. So I'd lure her with the sit, with yep. the treat, reward yep. her, and with the downs. Um, her name. Yeah trying to teach her her name, her name, and then have her lure and come to me and reward her for lots of that. Yeah, that's a great one. And for anybody who hasn't maybe seen that video on our channel, simply loading value on her name is really important. So you'd say gypsy, then reward, gypsy, then reward, gypsy, and then if she's maybe a little distracted, turn her in toward you and then reward. And that can be a really valuable exercise. Now, because you have, and I know, uh, Instructor Wendy, you do um, you know, competition retriever stuff right. with your golden retriever. So what sort of things did you do with her that are retriever specific? So her, I started with her like a, just a fuzzy toy and I was just kind of tugging and playing with her and then I would throw it just a little bit and then she would bring it back to me and we would tug and play with it and she would have lots of fun and um, then I got her little bumper which we work in field class and then I was starting to throw it and she would have a line on so that if she didn't want to bring it back you know I could guide her back to me and when she brought it back we would have fun with it yep. and then I would throw it again. And Great. Yeah, if you haven't uh, worked with uh, any retrieving stuff with your fetch exercises with your dog, I'll actually link a video above that um, is exactly what Instructor Wendy's talking about, where you have a little bit of control of your dog with that line on, but you also have a little bit of control of that item so that they can't choose to keep it away from you. But um, those things are so um, so much fun to do with your puppy, oh, yeah. and what a great way to burn off puppy energy. Oh, it's great. If it's raining outside and you don't want to go outside, in the hallway, I, and I now I can throw it right down the hall. She goes flying down the hall and she brings it back to me. We have a tug and play and it's great. That's awesome. Now, because she's coming into a household with other dogs, describe the process of um, socialization, like introducing her to your other dogs. Well, my one dog's an 11 year old golden, so I knew she would be fine. I didn't worry about her. And, you know, I had her on a leash to make sure that she didn't jump on her or anything. But I also have a four year old shepherd. So that was a little different. I waited, you know, Actually, I think didn't think in just the first day, the second day maybe, um, but I brought him out with a leash on. Okay. And uh, because I didn't want him pawing her or jumping on her because sure. he could hurt her. Yeah. He's quite large, and yeah. So it took a bit, you know, before I could actually trust them together. But I'm even now I 100% supervise them together. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's really important for people to remember is that um, when you when you are introducing your puppy to maybe your other dogs at home or other dogs uh you know out uh, family members dogs or whatever you need to control the situation oh, you right. need to con have control of those other dogs and, and you need to have control of your puppy because they're going to very quickly find value in playing with those oh, other yes. dogs so you need to make sure that you have your house line on for example or you have a leash on them and that you can control the process a little bit not only to keep them safe because that's really important very important but also to build value on you so that you your retriever puppy will listen to you even in some of these exciting environments well, that's just it. I didn't want her to think that he's wonderful, like he'll play and have fun with me, whereas, you know, I want her to look up to me for her leadership. And totally. Everything. Yeah, yeah. That's a great reminder for any puppy owner, and especially with you guys with the, the, those, those really friendly, happy-go-lucky golden retrievers. Because I know that you travel lots with her, you go all sorts of different places, describe the process to me about getting her accustomed to some of that traveling, because some puppies could really struggle with uh, being in the car. Yes. Well, I always have crates in the car for the dogs. They're a lot more comfortable in it. So we put in our crates and we go for little trips here and there and just get her used to, you know, driving in the car and then take her out and we'd play and do some stuff and then back in the crate and we'd go for another little trip. Yeah. So how long, maybe like drive three or four minutes, get her into and out of the crate or a little bit longer? Like how did you describe that process? Yeah, a little bit longer, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Okay. You know, I'd go to my son's place and then we'd play there and then back in the car or to my class and... Sure for coming here. Yeah, so some of that uh, includes some socialization, um, not only with people, or certainly not necessarily with other dogs, but 
places, uh, sounds, smells, yes. surfaces, all of those things are hugely important for your puppy training um, and getting your puppy uh, more confident and accustomed to these things. Did you, did you, ex how, what was your experience with her um, discovering new places? Um, well, we didn't want to go a lot of places because they haven't had all their shots yep. yet. So I just went places that I knew were safe. Like, you know, I came to work here and I knew it was okay out back. Yep. And, you know, my, like I said to my son's place, I knew it was safe there. So yeah. just kind of safe places that you can take your puppy and get them outside and experience things before they've had all their shots. For sure, yeah, and I think that is something that I know we hear a little bit uh, on the channel with potty training is uh, that you do need to be aware if your puppies, until they've had all of their vaccinations. Yeah. So what would, what would make a place safe in your mind? Um, places that I know people or I know that, you know, the dogs around or there's not a lot of dogs around that yeah. you don't know that they're, you know, other dogs have been there that haven't had their vaccines. So yeah, yeah. You just need to be a little bit more yeah, cautious. Yeah, not going to parks sure. where you, a lot of dogs will be at. I wouldn't go places like that. For sure. I hope you feel more prepared for bringing your new golden puppy home. If you're looking for more puppy training, make sure you click that card right there. I want to thank instructor Wendy and Gypsy for joining us today. And on that note, I'm Ken. This is Wendy. Happy training. Bye for now.